All right, folks, final full week of campaigning for Clinton and Trump. Both candidates are setting their sights on key battleground states in the latest NBC News, news analysis of early voting. More Democratic-affiliated voters have voted than Republican-affiliated voters in nine out of 12 battleground states. One of those battleground states, North Carolina. Clinton holds a six-point advantage over Trump in that state. Uh, but uh, uh, again, it's back and forth. Uh, joining us on the phone right now in Greensboro, North Carolina, Congresswoman Alma Adams. Congresswoman, good to have you on TV One. Good morning, Roland. It's good to be with you again. Uh, I was in North Carolina on Friday. I'll have a report uh, tomorrow. I visited some early voting sites, uh, talking to voters there. There have been massive lines in that state. Uh, and so Republicans, the uh, the plan they uh, passed, uh, many call uh, a onerous voter suppression law. Even a federal appeals court uh, struck it down, saying that there was a laser-like targeting of black voters. Uh, what are you seeing? What are you sensing there on the ground in North Carolina? Well, folks are very excited about the election. Uh, they want to get it over with, of course. It's just been uh, so much, uh, um, uh, so, so many nasty uh, ads and that kind of thing. But people are really excited about voting. As a matter of fact, um, our lines have been long, uh, but people have not minded the wait. I've been out uh, myself, and I spoke to a young man the other day. He walked up, and he said, how long is, it, is the wait? And I said, oh, about an hour and 10 minutes, he says, I'm prepared to wait three hours. So people are, are, are really eager about this, and um, they, they don't mind the waiting. They know that this is a very crucial election. Uh, and so we're seeing uh, tremendous uh, turnout. And of course, now with without having to have a, a voter ID, having to have an ID, um, that has made it um, even easier. Same day uh, voter registration has also been good. So uh, they've cut some of the uh, polling sites uh, out. For example, in Greensboro, when they first started, we only had one. Uh, so that meant that uh, the turnout here was not. Uh, what it has been. So first of all, for our audience, how tell them how large is Greensboro? I'm sorry. Uh, what's how the population long? size of Greensboro? Uh, about 300,000. So 300,000 people in the city and the Board of Elections there chose to have only one early voting location? That's what they did uh, for, for, for the earlier days, you know, when they when we start the first uh, couple of days, they have limited sites, and then they open more. Uh, Winston-Salem, uh, Forsyth County, they did the same thing. Uh, so uh, we they've cut some sites in, in Charlotte, but certainly not, not as many. Uh, but people are still going out. It's not really deterring folks uh, because we, we're very serious about this. Uh, this election. We know it's critical. Uh, as our president has said, there, there, there are lots of things on this ballot that we care about uh, getting aside from the um, individuals who are running. But, you know, we're going to relate those things that we care about and, and need to make sure that we maintain. Uh, so uh, people are they're, they're voting. The weather's been good and that's been uh, that's been helpful as well. But, but I really think even if the weather were, were, was not good, people would still get out. Um, we, we, we were serious about this. This is a battleground state, and we intend to win this battle here. All right, Congresswoman Alma Adams, I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Roland. Have a good day. Thank you very much. Let's go to the panel here. I mean, bottom line is here. Um, it, you have seen lines up to four hours. Mm -hmm. I mean, what Republicans uh, have done in North Carolina is utterly shameful. Right. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's indefensible. Uh, you know, I'm a believer in early voting. I voted early yesterday on Sunday. Um, I guess you call it my personal souls to the polls. Um, you know, what happened in North Carolina with, with this last voting debacle should not happen in any state in the union. I believe the right to vote should be unabridged and free and, you know, very, very accessible to folk. Jessica, we even seeing in Wisconsin where the voter ID law uh, and the state is dragging their feet even on issuing those voter IDs. And so it's like, wait a minute, you, you, you impacted the vote by, by having that law and now you're still messing around by being slow issuing those IDs. Absolutely, and it's what makes it's so silly that Republicans are even saying that this election could be rigged, right? Because if we believe that the election could be rigged, then what we would do is try to uh, create access and pathways to as many people to vote as possible by eliminating all of this voter suppression. So it's not that um, Republicans actually believe that the election's rigged, it's they believe that they're losing. You know, that, that's right, that there are certainly problems, right? But 
we also know folks have to get out and vote right now. You know, Election Day is not in 10 days in 37 states. You know, Election Day is happening right now because of early voting and folks have to get out. One concern I have is if you compare now to 2012, African-American voting is actually down in a couple of states, in Georgia, in North Carolina. And so the question here is, how do we get folks out and get that turnout up? But think, again, think, but, but, but again, Rashad, when, when you have a situation where they try to Mecklenburg County, where Charlotte is, to only have one early voting location with 900,000 people. He, you heard Congresswoman Adams say you have one early voting location in a city with 300,000 people. Uh, then, of course, you saw in uh, Wisconsin where a city clerk chose not to have an early voting location on a college campus, uh, University of Wisconsin, Green Bay, saying, oh, that's because they're likely going to vote Democrat. I mean, you have decisions being made to specifically uh, uh, keep folks from voting, forcing them to wait in long lines, forcing them to drive much further, even in some places go to a place where they have few parking spots uh, as opposed to uh, previous locations where they had lots of parking. So this is, this. Th what's happening here is a key moment for advocates, for anyone who's out there trying to turn folks out to vote. Um, back in 2012, the, the Pew Research did a study right afterwards and looked at sort of why did black people stand in long lines? Why did folks um, still turn out in the face of it being one of the first elections where those voter ID laws were really proliferated across the country? And people said two things um, that, that really were, were deep for, for Pew. And the, the two things were the attacks on President Obama and his citizenship and the attacks on the right to vote. And so we do understand for black communities the um, attempts to push back, to, to prevent us from the polls, does bring back a fight back spirit. And so I'm just hoping that for my organization, for others, that we are turning this on its head, that we are pushing people to recognize that um, folks are trying to hold us back. And this is a moment where we've got to push forward. And, and this is objective. In 2012, black folks waited in line twice as long as whites on average across the country. Right. And what they did was they even they, they shrunk, in this case, shrunk early voting even more so, cut Sunday voting as well to make those lines even longer. Kickstart your day at 7 and get the news you need from the perspective you want. News One Now with Roland Martin, every weekday morning at 7 on TV One.